Hey everybody, it's Sam, uh, Backcountry Runaway, coming back at you with another video. Um, this video is going to be about uh, first, current, and future bushcraft slash survival knives. And um, this video is coming from an open tag by Dave at Really Big Monkey One. That's his channel name. You should go check him out. Uh, he does a lot of camping and uh, bushcraft type stuff. At the moment, I have uh, three current uh bushcraft knives so um yeah i couldn't really pick three anyways so my first knife was a buck 110 um it was my first bushcraft knife uh my granddad gave me this knife and uh it worked out well the first thing i ever bought for bushcraft was a baco laplander so this paired with that made a really good uh team and back then i wasn't really doing anything advanced in bushcraft or anything so um the stuff that i was doing uh it worked out real great uh nowadays i don't really prefer a real uh clip point like that um or hollow grinds but this is still a good skin and knife and if I wanted to skin some animals with it or something like that, uh, slicing of any kind, I wouldn't hesitate to do it because um, that hollow grind is really good for that. Um, <coughs> or a food prep knife. I'll use this for a food prep knife for sure. Um, but I really, I have retired this knife because um, my granddad used it a lot and so did I, as you can probably see. Um, and I, I just want to keep it how it is and it just came in a leather belt sheath for it um, but yeah that was my first knife right there uh, for bushcraft and currently my go to uh, knife is a Mora number one and uh i really like this knife i mean i can keep it i can keep it razor sharp uh it does everything that i want it to do as far as knife work goes and i i either carry it with this leather sheath right here that i got from ebay uh it was a really really nice leather sheath and a friend recommended it to me so i got it and I keep a whistle on it and a ferro rod on it. So I guess you could say it's set up for a short term survival. Um, I also carry, well, I won't, go, I won't go get it because I have this Mora 2 right here. But um, you see how this is set up? Well, I also have a sheath set up for this one just like that. Um, and I, I don't carry it as often but that's a real survival knife. Um, the only difference between that setup and this setup is there's more paracord for that setup. It's braided paracord. It's about 15 foot. Um, so yeah, that we'll talk about that more in detail when I get to this knife in just a second. But yeah, I've had, this is actually my second number one. My first one I modified a lot with the handle and stuff. It's sitting right over there I'm not gonna go grab it right now um, but I retired that one too because it's the knife that I really learned how to sharpen um, put a real keen edge on a knife with um, without any trouble um, as far as the Scandi knife goes because it was my first Scandinavian uh, ground knife uh, I'll show you my more up close I've used it. It's starting to develop a pretty good patina on it. You can tell the difference between where the edge is from recent uh, maintenance on it and the top portion of the knife. Um, yeah, so that's like my main go-to right now. Um, I swap it out depending on what I'm doing and where I'm going. And it's my EDC knife. I carry it everywhere. I go around my neck. Um, just about, I mean, 
unless unless I'm not allowed to carry it, I carry it pretty much. Um, and then I got this little more 2.0 right here, and it's just a smaller version of the knife I've been using for shoot. It's been I guess almost a year and a few months. It'll be a year. My sister got me this knife and. Uh, I really like it a lot uh, it's a really really nice knife uh, and the size is great for really fine carving tasks and stuff like that I carve spoons with it um, but yeah I got it so basically I have it set up like uh, Cody Lundin recommends in uh, his book 98.6 degrees um, and I added um, some bicycle inner tube to pair with the lighter uh, as a fire extender and there's a mini ferro rod uh, that I keep on just about all my all my neck knives except for the ones that I have full size ferro rods on uh, and then a whistle and all my knives that I carry into the bush uh, they all have whistles on them third current knife that I'm going to show you is mainly just for when I go hiking and backpacking or carry this sometimes I carry it more um, but I designed this for backpacking um, my my friend in Kentucky uh, Jay Thompson uh, knives and antlers you can look them up on Facebook um, he he made me this knife I had an idea in mind for um, a knife that I could carry backpacking that was nice and lightweight you can see it's it's a real thin blade on there um, it's a it's a it's a it's a pretty thin blade um, yeah it needs some major TLC right now it was just out with me not long ago and I didn't have a chance to really keep it up like I should have uh, I started on the TLC already I just didn't finish it yet that's why it's not put together all the way um, but yeah so I had an idea in mind for a knife that I could carry hiking and backpacking and had a real comfortable handle um, but that I could still use for bushcrafting that would still be good for you know carving spoons and um, notches and feather sticking and all that good stuff uh, but I still wanted a fixed blade and I wanted it to be thin and light do that those kinds of tests really well and I wanted it to be high carbon steel so this is 1095 high carbon steel and the handle scales they're uh, rubberized and it is a it is a full tang I know it's hard to see because the tang of it has some pretty good patina there you go you can see it there it's darkened it's not rusted but it's it's darkened it's like a gray color uh, but yeah so it's it's a rubberized it's rubber rubber solid rubber scales uh, it's not rubberized it's solid rubber scales um, there's a g10 pen in in the scales up here and down here that's an aluminum uh, tube some aluminum tubing for the lanyard hole anyways so my video cut off so uh, I'm starting back where I left off um, I wanted the lanyard hole to be around the size of paracord uh, I wanted a real nice 90 degree spine for uh, striking a ferro rod and um, scraping bark and stuff like that uh, processing tinder and things of that nature um, and yeah so that's pretty much what I came up with and I drew drew up a really really rough picture of it and was like hey man these are the specs I'm looking for this is kind of what I'm looking for you know for a backpacking knife slash bushcraft knife so you know can you make it for me and it's just in this uh kydex sheath uh i'll add a ferro rod to it uh again when 
I set it back up and the whistle um, I did have stuff attached right here to it but I'm changing it up um, yeah so that does it for my current knives um, you've seen my two mores and that knife those are kind of my go-to knives right there the only one I would add to it I would say is probably a spoon knife because I use it a lot to carve spoons and stuff like that. Um, now for future knives, I list this one right here because it's gotten some use, but it hasn't really gotten enough use for me to really say that I like it a lot. Um, it's a Condor Sapien. Uh, I think it's 1075 high carbon steel. Um, it's got this black coating of some kind and the top portion of it but the spine is not coated so that's cool uh scandy grind hardwood scales it looks like uh brass pins uh i really love the shape of the handle at the bottom right there i don't know i just find that attractive i wish they would have done the same thing right here for kind of a pinch grip um but uh i got this because it's kind of it's kind of got the same profile as Amora a little bit. Uh, it's about the same width, uh, but it's full tang. Uh, it's not super heavy, super giant knife. I still like it to be about four inches, about the width of my hand or a little longer. Uh, that's kind of my, kind of my go-to. Uh, shorter's fine too. I carry shorter knives like that Mora 2.0. There's a couple of knives that I want that I don't have um, that I consider future knives um, and I can't show them to you because, well, I don't have them. Um, one would be the Topps uh, Bushcraft uh, Kukri, the Condor uh, Heavy Duty Kukri or K-Tac Kukri, either one. Uh, and probably the Mora Garberg survival knives what people would consider survival knives i guess i only have one that i really consider my survival knife i guess um and it's a machete i'll show it to you real quick uh it's right here uh so it's just got a little nylon sheath for now i haven't decided to make one for it or buy one for it yet um I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's like Traumatina or something like that. Uh, it's made in Brazil. It's just a little 12 inch high carbon steel machete. It's got wood handle on it. It's full tang. Um, I really like this machete a lot. Um, I guess this would be considered my uh, survival knife, I guess. If I, I guess if I only had, if I was doing something like a show or something like that and I only had one knife and I could only choose one that I have currently it would be this one um, and that's because mainly the size and it's a pretty good chopper for the thinness of it uh, I've used it quite a bit since I got it it's it's a it's a really nice one I like it a lot I've batoned wood with it and I like this straight section right here I can use it as a flushing knife uh, if I want to so I really like that a lot uh, and this curve right here is just good enough to skin an animal if you need to so that's probably why I choose this as a survival knife it's kind of a good all-around knife I say it's got a comfortable handle once you sand it down a little bit and that's that's it on my knives y'all uh, yeah so Thanks for watching if you tuned in. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't filmed any adventures or anything here lately, but I'll try to get on that as soon as I can. Uh, in the meantime, I am going to be uh, trying to make some stuff and uh, doing some stuff here around the house that I want to film and around where I live and stuff. Uh, so maybe I'll do some of that if you're interested in it. Um, but yeah, so this is Sam at Backcountry Runaway. Thanks for watching the video.
uh, until next time. Thanks.